you need to know about Medicare if you're traveling outside the U.S. or plan on living outside the U.S.? Well, here to talk with me about that is Katie Vitava, author of Making the Most of Medicare. Katie, welcome. Thanks, Bob. Pleasure to be with you. Pleasure to have you here. Pleasure. It'll be a pleasure to have you walk us through what folks who are on Medicare need to know if, one, they plan on traveling outside the U.S. Yeah, it's an important topic and it's very timely this time of year. And I think travel is one of the greatest rewards of retirement. And people look forward to that. And if you plan ahead and know the things you need to organize ahead of time and how to handle your health care when you are in country out of the United States, you're going to be able to be just fine. So I'm happy to talk about that topic today. Where would you like to start? Well, I mean, uh, does Medicare cover me if I'm outside the U.S. and traveling? That is a good question. Generally speaking, Medicare does not cover you outside the U.S. unless, and there are exceptions, if you're near the Canadian border or the Mexican border and the closest hospital in an emergency would be in another country, then they will cover that. But otherwise, they do not cover travel, medical emergencies outside of the United States or any routine medical care outside of the United States. But there is coverage baked into some of the things we call supplementals that may cover some amount of care outside the U.S. Yeah. So if I'm in Costa Rica or or Portugal, Medicare won't cover me for a medical emergency. What do you suggest people do if they plan to be traveling um, not near Canada or not near Mexico? Yeah. What I suggest people do is, first of all, look at your coverage, which you can do every fall to evaluate. Is there a plan that covers international travel? Whether when I mentioned supplementals, some Medigap plans have in foreign travel benefit, it's $50,000. It's a lifetime benefit with a $250 deductible. And $50,000 around the globe goes a long way for healthcare. So look to see if you're gonna want a Medigap plan, select one of those plans that has that amount of coverage. Now, the proviso in that is that it's only good for the first 60 days of travel. So if you plan to stay longer, which I think we'll talk about in a couple of minutes, that's not going to be useful for you. It will be the first 60 days. Now, more and more, some Medicare Advantage plans now are including foreign travel medical coverage, but look at the benefit very closely. If it's really skimpy, then it's not going to buy you much. So then the alternatives are, or in addition to, person might want to get some travel health coverage. And the thing to think about with those plans are, how am I going to get it from an independent insurance company? Many of uh, your credit cards will have some amount of benefit for you. Or if you're traveling on an organized trip, they may have a medical coverage. But look at the plan very specifically for two things. One is, will it cover me for my medical services? And the other thing, which is a separate benefit or rider or sometimes a separate plan, is medical evacuation. Medical evacuation can be very costly and very important for people. So look to see is medical evacuation covered, and if so, at what amount of money? $25,000 is not near enough. I'd like to see at least $100,000 in medical evacuation coverage. In particular, if you will have serious health problems anyway, or if you're traveling to some place that's very remote and has very limited health care, or if you're going to do stuff that's risky. Now, if you're going to do risky things like hang gliding, you know, in the mountains in South America, some of those plans won't even cover you unless you divulge that ahead of time. So do your planning to make sure that you know what coverage you have, what pieces you might want to add on to. Yeah. Um, Just for sake of argument, Mm -hmm. if you had original Medicare and you're planning to travel abroad and you wanted to purchase a Medigap policy, it may not be possible or Mm -hmm. uh, it's possible. Is that right? Well, I think we've talked about this in some of our prior videos. Here's the thing about a Medigap policy. Even though it's a federal law, it varies by state of when you can get into a Medigap and when you cannot. And in most parts of the United States, you need to have signed up for a Medigap plan during your initial eligibility period, whether it's when you're 65 or when you leave employment coverage. There are exceptions, New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and I think Maine are the four states that allow people to get in during the year at other times. And there are exceptions to that. We do cover that in our book. And actually we have a table that goes state by state that will show you what opportunities you have to sign up for Medigap and at what times and how. But it can be trickier for most uh, people in the U.S. 
unless they've moved, that's a common exception. Say you move to another state out of your service area, then you would have a guaranteed issue period most of the time. So just look at that ahead of time. And the other thing, as I mentioned, many Medicare Advantage plans do include for, foreign travel medical coverage, which they didn't use to. So when you're in that annual enrollment period in the fall, look to see always first, are my medications covered and my doctors covered? But as a bonus, if I'm gonna travel, is there that benefit available for me? Yeah. So uh, some folks who are on Medicare not only want to travel abroad, they may want to sort of live abroad for an extended period of time, or if not uh, uh, mm -hmm. temporarily, maybe permanently. What, what do those folks need to know? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, sure. We have more and more people who are expats. They could have already been living abroad, been working abroad, or decide that they want to retire abroad. And there are several issues to consider. That Medicare, your initial enrollment is when you're 65 or when you leave employment coverage for yourself or your spouse. And people who want to live abroad need to look carefully at their choices. Medicare Part A, you enroll in and there's no fee. Medicare Part B, there is a premium for that based on income. And many people will tell me, well, I, I can't use it abroad, I'm gonna live abroad, and should I enroll in it? The thing to look at is what country are you going to live in? Because some countries that have national health coverage might allow you to have an exception when you come back to the United States to get into Medicare Part B with a special enrollment period and no penalties. But not that isn't true with every country. And you can look that up ahead of time and determine, determine that. Because when I see people who want to come back, it's when often they're older and they're ill and they want health care. And if you have not arranged for or understood if you get a special enrollment period, or pick the very right time of the year, which is the first quarter of each year to come back and get into Medicare Part B. If you didn't have the eligibility for special enrollment, you would have a penalty 10% per year for every year you were not covered. But for many people, they might have an option within the country where they're going to be to have alternative coverage that will make Medicare happy when you wanna come back, but do that homework ahead of time. Now, Medicare Part D, D is in drug is different. You, you don't need it when you're abroad, but it, when you come back to the United States, you can enroll in that right away and pick up a Part D plan. If you do plan to sort of um, retire abroad, Costa Rica, Portugal, Spain, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and mm -hmm. uh, is are there opportunities for you to enroll in those countries' health insurance um, programs? There may be. That's what I said, that you really need to look at that specific country. You can buy private coverage as well, but you want to know the difference of if that coverage will allow you that special enrollment period into Medicare, or are you buying private coverage that helps you pay your costs there, but does not give you an opportunity to get into Medicare when you return to the United States. There's also another exception for Medicare B special enrollment when you live abroad if you're a volunteer and working in a volunteer project. That's an exception that then will allow you a special enrollment period when you return to the United States. And there's good information on the Center for Medicare and Medi Medicaid Services website that will show you the countries where we have some pretty much automatic reciprocals. And then within that, you need to look at, even if your country isn't on there, explore their health coverage and see if it will suffice for Medicare. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and you also cover many of these same topics, both in your book and mm -hmm. on your website. How can people learn more yeah. about that? We do. One resource for people, too, when they're expats or traveling abroad, even if it's an extended period of time, is if you need to apply, say you're working abroad, you need, need to apply for Medicare Part A and you decide you want to pick up B or not, you can do most of that online anymore. But the U.S. embassies are the administrative office for all American citizens when you're abroad. And I have had cases where people needed to file specific paperwork, particularly to demonstrate that special enrollment period. And so be in touch with your local embassy if you need to file paperwork. Don't expect them to be experts on Medicare because they're not, but they will be the conduit for filing that kind of paperwork for you. Yeah, uh, we've covered a lot, of, a lot of ground. Anything we missed or just bears reemphasizing? I think some basic stuff when you're planning an extensive travel is, to me, simple stuff. 
Get your medications filled ahead of time. Make sure you have a list of your health history with you, including medications you take, allergies that you may have, contact information for all your care providers. Because so many times now we can exchange information via the internet. And if you get into a real serious health problem, that can be very helpful. And don't expect that you can get your prescriptions filled when you're out of country without seeing a healthcare provider there. Some of the medications we have in the United States are exactly the same. They might have a different name abroad and some of them are a little different. So if you're gonna stay for that long period of time, get yourself established somewhere with a healthcare provider and make that transition up so that it's effective for you. But planning ahead is really well worth it. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, 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 Katie, tell us about your website and how people can sort of access it. And uh, I know you have a, a section on your site to get dedicated to this topic as well. Yes, we do. Medicare and all kinds of information specifically, including on travel, is on our website, goodcare.com. And it's covered in our newest edition of our book, Medicare, A Guide for Baby Boomers. And that's going to be available for you on a PDF on our website and also soon in soft cover on Amazon. So we make that available for people, very economical and people find that to be helpful. Included in the book is the packing checklist for your healthcare. Oh. Katie, as always, it's a pleasure having you share your knowledge and wisdom with us. Uh, I, I, we so appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Bob. I think you do a great job getting the information out for folks. I appreciate it.